Burning Man means something different to everyone who participates. The event has morphed from a few friends meeting at a beach in California in the late 1980s to the erection in 1990 of the first 14-meter man effigy. Today, 70,000 burners gather here in Nevada's Black Rock Desert. Arguably, the center of Burning Man's playa is the effigy standing high on some sort of pedestal. Linking the physical to the immaterial is the temple. Jonathan La Liberty has donated this amazing 3D map. Check out his work and everyone else's mentioned in this film in the links below. If you want to make a real difference at Burning Man without even leaving your couch, get in touch with them and support their art. David Best returned this year, as he has on many other occasions, and built the 2016 temple with a dedicated crew. The temple is a place for everyone that people have lost. In my case, this is a personal place and represents a physical structure to remember my father. This act of leaving something here for him anchors the time we spent during his convalescence for me. Like everyone else who leaves something here, this personal message will disappear on Sunday as the temple is lit for the final burn of the festival. For the last nine years, Laura Clinton has been creating work for Burning Man and many other installations around the country, sometimes with her partner, Jeff Schomburg. This year, our crew got to Burning Man early and helped build our home dome at Camp De Material on the 730 Plaza. The camp was home to many different folks from all over the world. Most of Africa Burn, the largest Burning Man event outside of Black Rock City, uses tents like this. The tent makers have come to the United States to share their easy tent magic. One of the most incredible parts of Burning Man happens after sunset as the darkness rises. Solar Beats was one of these fantastic fun connections that kept popping up everywhere. Built through hard work and a dedicated not-for-profit foundation, and all of the lights and performance systems run off the sun's energy, and the truck moves around using biodiesel. Bianca Berger and Tad Snyder built the car outside Chicago on a permaculture farm with a small group of friends. I first caught up with them here on Thursday evening in front of the fantastic metal warthog Lord Snort at Sunset. Mam the Mammoth was originally created by the late Aspen, Colorado inventor Nick DeVolt for Burning Man in 2003. The man who is credited with creating the very first integrated circuit and ushering in the computer revolution designed the Mammoth quadricycle as a human-powered mutant vehicle. Yayoi Wakabayashi and co-creator Harvey Branscombe brought Mam back to Burning Man for the past few years to carry on her Mammoth legacy. Thank you. 
Burn Night starts early in the evening. This year, it began with a huge sandstorm that engulfed the playa from sunset. Before the art cars came together around the man, our small crew took refuge under Medusa Madness, an art project created by the group Reared in Steel, under the direction of maker and artist Kevin Clark. This is where everything seems to come together. While the famous steampunk octopus El Pulpo Mechanico starts to dance and flame up in the background. El Pulpo is the brainchild of Dwayne Flatmo and buddy Jerry Kunkel. Dwayne is a genius, obviously, but if you meet him in his great coat out on the playa, you might not realize that you are meeting a modern day Picasso who works in every possible medium. Using only gravity and an ingenious shaped internal structure that spins like a rotor, it is as elegantly simple as it is amazing. Dwayne and Jerry took El Pulpo Mechanico to Burning Man and put it together in 2011. Since then, they have brought the flaming sculpture to art museums, science centers, and San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf, where the city fire marshals gave it a huge flaming thumbs up. The Lost Tea Party was created in 2014 by the artist Wreckage International. The teapots roam the desert looking for willing tea drinkers and merrymakers to clamor inside and enjoy the passing view. People are everywhere. Finding anyone or anything lost in the merrymaking becomes an issue best left alone. The idea is keep your stuff close, know where to meet your friends, or make new ones right where you are. As more time goes by during the week, the festival grows, and so do the masses of people. Dancing, talking, celebrating, and moving. People are always moving, and the festival itself moves from place to place and time to time. A violinist playing here today may have been serenading skydivers at dawn yesterday. Everything is possible, nothing is a given, and that makes it a volatile and wild situation at every turn. Ultimately, it's left up to the participant to make of it what you will. I'm glad a place like this exists, but it's not for everyone. But neither is the opera, or NASCAR, or religion, or any of a plethora of playpens that children of the earth like to roll in. <laughs> 